Hello everybody, this is Dr. Aaron Seaton doing another video. Today's video is inflammation and the diet. You might be asking yourself, well, what does that have to do with chiropractic care? Well, I see patients, a lot of the times they're coming in, what neck pain, headaches, low back pain, whatever, um, and we start adjusting them and they're not quite progressing the way we would like to see them progress. We'd like to see them getting better faster. And in those cases, we start to have some discussions about what they're putting into their body because our diet can directly impact the level of inflammation that we feel. So these are things that I talk to those patients about to avoid, do your best to eliminate this stuff from your diet because this will cause ongoing inflammation and that can show up in the joints, that can show up everywhere and you can have unexplained pain and this could be a potential cause of some of that or at least contributing to that. So if we can remove some of this stuff from your diet and start improving your diet, that can help with your chiropractic progress. So first one, PUFAs, right? Polyunsaturated fatty acids. These have skyrocketed in our diet in the last hundred years. And these are like the typical vegetable oils that were not present in our diet prior. Things like corn oil, cottonseed oil, peanut oil, all these types of, and then also in, I'd say even hydrogenated oils or trans fats, all of this stuff is in processed foods. It's kind of hidden into these things. And a lot of people now are consuming these at levels way beyond what we used to. So this is something that I would say is very important to really look at getting this out of your diet. The second one is a lot of sugar in grains. We know sugar causes inflammation. We know it thickens the blood. We know there's little to no nutrient benefit of consuming sugar whatsoever. So having just, and the good news is like these top two are usually found in a lot of processed and packaged foods. Things that if you just kind of stick with the natural stuff, you can avoid a lot of this if you do that. So keep an eye out for these because these two right here, big, big, big in influence on inflammation in your body. So if you can start, I mean, nobody's perfect, but if you can start really getting like 80% of these plus out of your diet, I think you'll all of us would feel a heck of a lot better if we were doing that. And so rather than just have the video that's oh, all negative, don't eat this, don't eat that, what can we eat? So this is just a basic list to kind of start introducing you to these concepts. Pasture-raised meats and eggs, like grass-fed beef, grass-fed lamb, pasture-raised eggs. Hopefully these are from chickens that are out roaming around, not just eating chicken feed, because a lot of chicken feed is mainly corn and soy, which has a lot of this in it. So if we can get our eggs from somebody, hopefully you know somebody local that has pasture raised hens that are kind of roaming around and grazing and eating stuff, finding bugs, eating a lot of different things on top of having you know some baseline feed, those eggs are going to be far healthier. And they actually did a study on eggs where they had just the regular caged you know hens and they had pastured hens, hens that were roaming around allowed to kind of freely eat and find things in their diet. Um, these eggs had 17 times more of this. So the, the, the caged hens had 17 times more PUFAs in the actual egg itself from just being on a diet of corn, soy, chicken feed. So once you pull them out and you put them on a pasture and you let those chickens eat, you're actually eating eggs that are very close, in most cases are very, very close to having an omega-6, omega-3 ratio of one to one, which is ideal, like having a balance of your fatty acids. When you put them on this caged diet and they're only given chicken feed, these skyrocket, the linoleic acids, these omega-6s start going way up in the actual egg yolk. So not something you wanna be consuming regularly. Um, so pasture raised is a way to go with your with your beef, with your lamb, with your eggs. Um, homemade bone broths can be very, very healthy for us. Lots of minerals can be in there, um, especially if you're using marrow bones from pasture raised animals can be very healthy. Wild seafood is phenomenal for us. So wild salmon, wild fish is very healthy and especially wild salmon is loaded with omega-3 fatty acids, which Omega-3s have an anti-inflammatory effect, right? These are pro-inflammation, they cause inflammation. Omega-3 fatty acids have an anti-inflammatory effect on us. 
They're very good for our brain health, our cardiovascular health. So things like wild salmon can be very healthy, also loaded with vitamin D. And then also the fruits and the veggies, getting our carbs from sources like whole, whole fruits, um, we're tending to have more minerals in there, more antioxidants present when we're eating that. I'm not saying eat zero carbohydrates, but trying to get your sources of carbs from better sources than just straight sugar or straight grain products all the time. Um, this would be a lot healthier if we can kind of work from this menu here and try to minimize this. And like I said, nobody's perfect. Nobody's 100%, but if we could really get 80 plus percent of this out of your diet and really start kind of swimming in these waters, so to speak, uh, eating from this list more, you're gonna be feeling a lot less inflammation and that will definitely impact your chiropractic care. I'm Dr. Aaron Seaton with The Chiropractic Place.